wondering how you felt when you looked at the talk schedule and saw a classicist. Were you surprised? Maybe astonished is the right word? Curious, I hope? Depending on how you did in your humanities courses, excited or not so much. And for those of you not familiar with classical studies, you may know this meme about what my parents think I do, what my friends think I do, what I actually do. So this will give you an idea. Today I will show you not only that we classes are funny, well, that too, but that classics and the humanities are at the center of world affairs and can help, along with other disciplines, address the world's most pressing issues. Now, we classicists are also mind readers. I can guess that some of you are thinking, but how? Nothing that happened 2,500 years ago can be that pressing and certainly cannot relate to what we are dealing with at the moment. To put it simply, why classics? In classics, you have a sense of omniscience. How often do you not wonder, what if I do this? Or worse, what if I had done this? In classical texts, you can go straight to the last page to see how the story ends, which makes both personal and, more importantly, societal experimentation safe and possible. Greek and Roman historians write about what it means to be the conqueror and the defeated. Dramatists feature women war captives and their suffering and urge for compassion. Politicians debate freedom and democracy and, of course, occasionally manipulate both. Philosophers teach you how to deal with grief or be a true leader. And people pride themselves on being multilingual and multicultural. Not to glorify everything. Wars, imperialism, slavery, lack of women's rights, religious persecutions, they are also distinctive parts of the Greco-Roman world. But learning from the past also means avoiding the mistakes of the past. On a smaller scale, what did I find in classics? Well, let's face it, you do not hear so many women authors' voices for one thing. The first time that I realized that I could only have a life, or at least the life that I wanted, would be if I left Greece, I was 12 years old. I was never Greek enough. I was not a proper young girl, or by the same standards, a model young woman. I was reading too much. I did not bother to let the cook or find a husband. And I was always annoyingly on time. Famous stereotype about Greeks always being late, which is accurate. So, when you are breaking out of the mold and crafting a new one, you are looking for models, or at least some existential proof that what you are dreaming about can happen. And it was in classics that I found the first revolutionaries. Sure, there are not so many women authors, and the silence is deafening. But if you care to look beyond the obvious, the voices of strong women characters are roaring. And this is how I connected to classics. I was able to find diverse voices that told me that it was okay to be different, to be a disruptor. Antigone disregards the king to stay true to herself. Medea, although problematic in many respects, is the first openly declared divorcee who wants to fight for women's rights. Sappho, the poetess, is known as a lesbian. Gender fluid and beyond stereotyped identities are given a voice in classics and are presented for the beauty that is the human nature. And I'm not the only one who found answers in classics. One of the most famous students of classics is Chris Martin, the lead singer of Coldplay. Others made careers in public service as prime ministers, doctors, and Nobel Prize physicists. People who had to deal with the world's biggest challenges. 
people like Anthony Fauci, the former director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, and James Baker, the former U.S. Secretary of State. People who had to face different types of challenges, whether it be fronting COVID relief strategies or being responsible for American foreign policies. But what are the biggest challenges of our generation? Wars, pandemics, the economy, lack of civic engagement, inequality, the environment? How do we solve them? How will it turn out? Most people tend to STEM education. Science, technology, medicine, finance, politics. They all seem like a no-brainer to tackle these issues. So, where does classics fit into all of this? Today, I will explain how classical studies, a seemingly unlikely contender in the world arena, when partnered with the world's newest development, artificial intelligence, can help us understand, address, and help solve many of these issues. Because when we are faced with the biggest challenges, we should learn from all the experts. Mark Twain, the famous American novelist, is quoted as saying, history may not repeat itself, but it does rhyme. World events, politics, human relationships that we've come to believe that are only products of our times did happen in the past one way or another. To show you what I mean, I would like to invite you to play a game with me. And I would like to try to ask you to try and guess where these quotes are from, whether they are ancient or modern. So, who do you think said that? That was Vladimir Putin making up excuses for the invasion of Ukraine. And how about this? That was Thucydides giving us an account of Athenian imperialistic aggression against a fellow Greek territory. And how about this one? Does this not sound like a part from a feminist speech or a UN assembly advocating for women's rights? This was actually Plato 2,500 years ago. And how about this one? That sounds very similar in tone, but it is in fact by Malala, the Pakistani education activist. And how about this one about slavery? If you thought that it sounded like something Abraham Lincoln might say, you would be correct. And now how about this one? That was actually Homer, millennia ago. The similarities between the ancient and modern quotes are eerie. And in the case of the ancient ones, for us, prescient. So as you can see, nothing is really ever new. And history truly does rhyme. So now, you may reasonably be wondering, where does AI fit into all this? Most certainly, ancient Greeks and Romans did not have personalized TikTok algorithms. Classical and humanities education give us the opportunity to study the human condition and understand ourselves and the world. They give us the chance to realize that we do not just happen to be the way we are. A kind word or a nasty comment do not just slip. And wars are not random seismic geopolitical shifts. They are all results of people's relationships, actions and reactions at a nano level on a worldwide scale. Technology, on the other end, facilitates aspects of these very lives. It has enhanced our way of living, changed warfare, advanced medicine, changed and challenged our social interactions, and put us into the breach of AI. In short, technology is all about the people. So, even though, by all appearances, humanities and technology are two different strands in our lives, in essence, they both serve the same purpose, humanity. And it is only a tandem relationship that can truly move us forward. Now, when it comes to connecting classics and AI, 
Classics is part of global history, and AI is part of the global future. So today I'm here to explain how understanding the past while getting a hold of the future with a humanities-informed AI can give us the best of both worlds. AI is happening right now, as we speak. It is a technological development, but at the same time, it is becoming a way of operating, living, thinking, healing, working, and socializing, as it assists doctors and dating sites, business corporations, employers, and streaming companies. And what is classics about? Is classics not about the ways of operating, living, thinking, healing, working, and socializing just at a different time? And now, think of the way they work. With classics, we have the benefit of hindsight, learning from the past. And AI is all about using already acquired data to predict. So think of classics and AI as giving you the chance to make educated predictions and learn from someone else's wisdom and mistakes. In my work specifically, I am humanizing AI and using the power of machines to empower people. I use AI to trace the history of identity, belonging, equality, inequality, justice, and injustice in the Greco-Roman worlds. With my team, we are building software to query every surviving Greek and Latin text for descriptive words, descriptive of ethnicity, race, skin color, gender, sexual orientation, religion, citizenship status, in order to trace the context of these words and find out how people were actually treated in the Greco-Roman antiquity. Such an in-depth study of these terms will give us a solid understanding of which of these attributes were received positively and which negatively, during which times, by which authors, and under which political systems. My research focuses on ancient Rome, an imperialistic power that was, however, open to multilingualism, multiculturalism, and can even boast of Septimius Severus, an African-born Roman emperor. Diversity in leadership, that is still lacking nowadays. Of course, not all Romans were equally open-minded, not unlike today. Cicero, a Roman statesman, said, denying foreigners access to the city is truly inhumane. Juvenal, on the other hand, a Roman poet, complaining about immigrants, said, these foreigners will steal our wealth and become the masters of our houses. Does this not resemble the present? And the difficulty people have in many countries in accepting immigrants and asylum seekers. My research also focuses on ancient Greece, its culture and its lessons. Ancient Athenians destroyed the fellow island of Milos because they could not get into an alliance with them. They killed the male inhabitants and enslaved women and children. Euripides, an Athenian dramatist, wrote a play titled Trojan Women, seemingly about the mythological Trojan War, but in reality to expose Athenian imperialistic aggression. And he had it performed in front of an Athenian audience. At that moment, ancient Athenians had to come to terms not only with what they did and how it affected the soldiers, but how it affected women and children, how they were mistreated, misplaced, enslaved, killed. Has anyone ever seen anything like this about the Rohingya genocide? Every time the Muslim Rohingya have been persecuted by the Burmese military since the 1970s, and most recently, since 2017. Religion, 
culture, imperialism, nationalism, there is always a reason to fight. But what if we learn from the past and turn these reasons to respect, understanding, acceptance, cooperation, and common humane goals so that the world can do better the next time around. Now, what are the obvious advantages of my work? First, I hope to empower people within and beyond academia to fully understand these texts and heed the lessons of the past. A close study of classical Greek and Latin texts can have immense implications that AI can help us explore. Did you know that ChatGPT can also translate ancient Greek and Latin? Going back to a forgotten but still very relevant past can give us a new appreciation and understanding of the power of the human word that leads to action, reaction, and misaction. My AI research is bound to open up the knowledge of the Greco-Roman world and bring it to the present. Even more importantly, though, I'm hoping that this initiative will encourage people to read between the lines and process information attentively and thoughtfully, not simply as consumers, but as active thinkers. Ultimately, I am using AI not to simplify and speed up, but to slow down and think through. We can all use it to help us think deeper, stop looking for the easy answer, humanize our way of thinking, and become intelligent humans. Schopenhauer, a well-known German philosopher, said, a man can do what he wills, but not will what he wills. Books, news, social media feeds, podcasts, and every other form of the oral and written word really wills us to think. Classical and humanities education enriched not with the speed of AI, but with the pondering it can enable us to achieve, can help unveil the truths of the past, while empowering the way to understanding, respecting, and protecting the present and bettering the future. Classics and AI are not competing, just like the past and the future are not competing. One complements the other, and together they can be collaborative forces of change. Classics and artificial intelligence together can help us understand, own the past, and help us build a human-oriented, progressive world. Now, do you see the AI in classics? Thank you.